Welcome to the Neighborhood Watch course on Strategic Planning. This is a self-paced learning course where you'll have an opportunity to improve your knowledge and skills regarding strategic planning activities. As a law enforcement officer, you will need to have a thorough understanding of this material so that you can share this important information with your Neighborhood Watch groups. The community version of this course has a facilitator's guide and a PowerPoint presentation that you will use when instructing your local block watch captains and neighborhood watch volunteers. During this course, you'll be learning how to build your own personal strategic plan as well as assist your neighborhood watch leaders and other concerned citizens in developing their plans for their neighborhood watch groups. Now, before you begin this course, please take time to download and print the Strategic Planning Participant Book. Throughout this course, you'll be asked to stop and answer questions or complete various activities. When you've completed the course, you may use the Participant Book as a quick reference guide. In this course on strategic planning, law enforcement officers and public safety officers will get an overview on the strategic planning process, be able to help participants in identifying their neighborhood issues and concerns, and teach participants how to write goals, objectives, and action steps. Throughout the course, you'll be challenged to complete various activities that will assist you in your own personal planning and prepare you for the time when you work with your neighborhood watch groups to develop their plans. While most people focus on the document that's produced when strategic planning occurs, the process of its creation is equally important. If the process is not inclusive and the participants are not actively involved in the decision making, the document will probably not be as effective as it could be. Strategic planning, therefore, is both a document and a process. Strategic planning is a process which facilitates communication and builds understanding between the community the local government, and the police. It's also a document to which all parties have agreed upon and which identifies both long and short-range goals. When implemented properly, the strategic planning process can be both a roadmap to success and the standard against which budgeting, deployment, organizational structure, and all other implementation issues are regularly measured. As we stated earlier, the process of developing the plan is as important as the actual plan itself. Some of the desired results of the process include goal ownership, a sense of pride in achievement, satisfaction in being part of the team, and a sense of direction for the group. As you work individually with the team members and the committee as a whole, you'll get a feel for the degree of satisfaction with the process. Ensure that everyone has bought into and agreed upon the goals and that the group is moving forward as a team. This doesn't mean there should not be some degree of conflict or disagreement, which is a natural component of the group process, but overall the group should have come to a consensus on the vision of the organization and its primary goals. In developing strategic planning documents, there are several desired results including building a roadmap to track progress and achievements, designing a template to measure progress and key indicators of success, and to have a living document that doesn't sit on the shelf but instead is modified and adapted to the changes in the group or its environment. Both long-term and short-term strategic plans provide a roadmap to guide the organization toward its goals and the fulfillment of its mission. Because the objectives are specific and identifiable, which we'll discuss in detail later. They serve as mile markers along this roadmap to success. Finally, the document should be designed a living document that is adaptable and constantly modified to meet the changing needs of the times in the organization. The worst outcome for a strategic planning document is to sit on a shelf where no one ever looks at it. The document should guide and monitor the progress of the organization. Now turn to page four of your participant guide and answer the questions under what is a strategic plan? Let's begin by looking at the steps involved in developing an action plan. They are vision, mission statement, assessment, action planning, and evaluation. We'll examine each step, its importance, and the process for completion. By the time you complete this training, you'll have a comprehensive planning process that you can utilize when you assist your neighborhood watch organization in building their plan. 
The following are critical planning components that you will use when you're implementing the planning process in Step 3. Each one of these items will be explained in detail as you continue through this course. It's important to note that although the process may seem linear, it's actually circular in nature. As you gain more information and evaluate your progress, you may return to your goal setting or objective development. Now let's examine the list of components in the strategic planning process. Vision is the long-term view of where you want to be in the future. Mission is the core purpose for your department or organization. It answers why you exist. Goals are a brief list of long-range outcomes that are relatively permanent and include internal and external lists of what you hope to achieve. Objectives are the things that you do to achieve your goals and they're likely to change as you move towards accomplishing those goals. Action steps are the more frequent, short-range subset of activities that will help you reach your objectives. Now turn to page 5 and define each of the critical components of strategic planning. In order for the process to be a significant component of the plan, the right people must be identified to participate in the process. If only yes people are brought to the table, then the process may fail for lack of appropriate vetting. Key individuals may include both formal and informal leaders and represent a diverse cross-section of the community. Some neighborhood individuals you may want to consider, along with your law enforcement liaison, include residents, business owners, community activists, and clergy. As you develop your own personal strategic plan, you may want to involve your supervisors or other community contacts to provide you with input. However, when you're working through the strategic planning process with your neighborhood watch group, you will want to include many of the individuals involved in your neighborhood and the community. Think for a moment who you should include in your own personal strategic plan. Which people or what positions should you include in your neighborhood watch group's plan? On page 6 of your participant book, charts are provided for you to fill in the names and the contact information of people you're thinking of including in your process. As you continue through this training, you may think of others you'd like to involve. You can add to the charts at any time. If you need more space than the charts provide, you can make your own chart on another sheet of paper. This list of names will be useful as you start your planning process. We will begin by developing a vision for your program. A vision is an expression of the standards you want to see implemented in your neighborhood or community. Understanding the vision for your program begins by understanding who you are and what you stand for. And this applies to your neighborhood watch group as well. They must understand who they are and what their beliefs and values are. Your vision will serve as the foundation for your mission. It's also the team's guiding light. It'll help you steer your actions and initiatives. Your vision. Activity number one. Imagine it's 10 years from now. Looking into the future, you can see everything about your neighborhood watch program. What it looks like, how it operates, and how the people function. Take a few minutes to look at this neighborhood and then complete the visions worksheet found on page 7 of your participant book. What are some of the key phrases and concepts that appear often? The mission is the bridge between the vision and the goals. It's a statement of how you or your group will conduct your business. And it's also a statement of understanding that guides and focuses your plan and your activities. The mission statement consists of three primary parts, identity, belief, and action. The identity is a statement of who you are. The statement identifies your position or your group. The belief portion of the mission statement is tied directly to your vision. It's the statement of your beliefs or the beliefs of your group. The last component is action. The action portion of your mission is a general statement of what you're going to do. The development of a mission statement can be relatively easy if you focus on these three components. Now, on page 8 of your participant book, answer the questions and fill in the chart under the section Mission. 
then you should look at this example of a mission statement and identify its components. The example is, the River Oaks Neighborhood Watch Group believes in the right to live in a safe community. Therefore, we will support and communicate with each other to prevent violence and promote safety. Before you develop your own mission statement, let's identify the three components in the example. Using your mission statement worksheet, found on page 9 of your participant book, complete the following statements. Identity, belief, and action. This will serve as the skeleton of your mission statement. Once you've written a statement for each, complete your mission statement. When developing strategic plans for your neighborhood watch group, there is an easy four-step procedure that can facilitate your planning process. This four-step process is to collect relevant data concerning your neighborhood or community. To understand the data that's collected and how it serves as a baseline for evaluation. Implement planning process utilizing that data. Evaluate and update plans as needed. The first step is to collect the relevant data about your community or neighborhood. We will discuss this topic in detail in the community assessment section, but generally this data consists of offense reports, arrest reports, crime statistics, and even word of mouth and anecdotal information from individuals who may have been victimized but did not report the incident to the police. Once you've compiled current data, you may want to gather past information so that some type of historical pattern or baseline is established. Often citizens who are upset at current events actually discover that crime or offenses have decreased when viewing historical data. However, sometimes they also see trends that are developing and can form plans to slow down, stop, or reverse those unwanted activities. With data in hand, you can begin the planning process, isolating the areas to focus on and moving forward. After plan development, a continuous process of evaluating and updating should commence. For the plan to be beneficial, it should change, adapt, and grow as your community changes, adapts, and grows. The purpose of assessment is to identify conditions in a neighborhood or community that contribute to its vulnerability to crime and other neighborhood problems. Assessment is an important step for any plan. Without it, you risk focusing on issues that may not exist. As you can see by the graphic, conducting an assessment is a cyclical and ongoing process to ensure that the latest and most accurate information is being used. There are four areas in the assessment process, risks, resources, obstacles, and priorities. When you begin the assessment process, begin by identifying the risk to your own program. When planning for a specific neighborhood watch group, identify the risk to that particular neighborhood. Risk can be in terms of physical environment, access to the neighborhood, or group behaviors such as gangs. Resources include a variety of items that are currently present and can provide you or your group with support. Obstacles are those items that can interfere or sabotage your efforts, such as lack of buy-in. The last area is priorities. Once you've drawn the assessment process to a close, you can begin identifying the priorities that need immediate attention. Those priorities will become the goals of your action plan. Important information and valuable data can be obtained from a variety of sources within your community. Information from the neighbors who are and have been living in the community for years can be invaluable. Most long-term residents are keenly aware of their activities and the individuals in their neighborhood. Police reports can contain a tremendous amount of information on the crimes that are occurring in the community. And other data, such as information from schools or church officials, can help officers and citizens alike to gain a better understanding of their community. Let's begin by looking at all the different data sources. The first source is found within the neighborhood, and it includes surveys. What information can you gather by distributing a neighborhood survey? What issues do the neighbors have? What are their fears? 
interviews. You can gather information about the neighborhood by talking with neighbors. This may involve calling them on the phone or even walking door to door. Meetings. Gather information while you're at community meetings or events. Use that time to discuss ideas and issues. Local business and school information. Ask your local businesses or school for data. They can provide information such as incidents on drug use, property damage, etc. One of the most common and frequently used sources of police data are offense reports. These reports can provide new neighborhood watch liaisons and their community volunteers with a wealth of information. And with new community policing and crime mapping initiatives in many cities, the information may be only days or even hours old. Arrest reports are another source of law enforcement information that can be used to determine community needs. Law enforcement liaisons can assist community members, especially when the topic is arrest relevant, such as known and convicted sex offenders who may be living in the area. Calls for service provide a separate and distinct look at the local crime stats because not all calls for service result in an offense being reported or an arrest being made. Calls for service can be helpful in determining the overall police workload in a designated area. Historically, areas with higher calls for service receive less proactive or preventative policing because the officers are running from call to call just to keep up with the 911 demands. Additional sources of information that may be helpful as a community begins to develop its strategic plan are census and economic data. This information can include important facts on the area's unemployment rate, education level, business activity, and the types of neighborhood disorder or quality of life violations that may be occurring in a designated area. Other sources of information may include victimization surveys, insurance rate information, and the neighborhood's physical environment. Physical and environmental factors need to be considered as neighbors gather information on the community. In some neighborhoods, there are specific boundaries that are identified by streets or architectural style. While in other neighborhoods, all of the houses or businesses seem to run together with little distinction. In some cities, Crime Watch communities overlap ethnic or cultural boundaries. And it's important for leaders to understand these dynamics and employ methodologies which allow groups to work together. You should gather information about the level of crimes in the neighborhood, but also consider the neighborhood's proximity to other high crime areas. There may be sites in the neighborhood that contribute to crime. For example, if few crimes but significant neighborhood code violations are being reported, your neighborhood watch group may want to focus its attention and resources on quality of life issues. On the other hand, if crimes are plaguing the citizens, then plans to address specific offenses may be in order. Let's take a minute or two to talk about your concerns. What types of risks are you dealing with at this moment? What other risks might you face? Now that you've gathered your data and you understand the data that you've collected, it's time to develop and implement a process utilizing that data. You've completed your assessment and now you move on to the next step, which is to identify the risk and resources and then to set some priorities. Risks are often a concern for many programs as well as neighborhoods and communities. Theft, vandalism, gangs, drugs, and other dangers are often the reason that the neighborhood watch group exists in the first place. Eliminating risks is an important issue for most neighborhood watch groups. Let's take a minute or two to talk about your concerns. What types of risks are you dealing with at this moment? What other risks might you face? Find your planning worksheet in your participant book on page 11. Fill in your identified risks. You may use the same column to identify any needs you may have at this time as well. This worksheet should also be used when training and planning with your neighborhood watch group. Now let's talk about resources. Think about your agency and your program. Here are some of the resources that we've identified. Financial, personal, materials, training, and organization. 
Financial resources can include both individual and outside agency resources. Personal resources can include items such as individual skills or talents. Materials can range from items such as training materials to building materials. And training resources can also come from individuals or outside agencies, such as your local law enforcement organization. Let's not forget other organizations that are in your community. Civic, social, and service groups such as Kiwanis or Rotary. These groups can provide everything from speakers to volunteers. Building partnerships within your community can add strength to your neighborhood watch group. Don't limit yourself. Be creative when looking for partners and resources. Using your Action Plan Worksheet, page 11 of your participant book, begin listing resources. Obstacles can often get in the way of your group's success. They can include a lack of funding, time, or support. Lack of support can sometimes be considered a readiness issue. There may be times when you need to prepare your neighborhood for a neighborhood watch program. For instance, if your neighborhood watch group wants to focus on a drug problem in the neighborhood, you may need to determine if the neighborhood is aware that the problem exists. If some neighbors are in denial, then you'll need to educate them before you begin your prevention efforts in order to get their support. Using your action planning worksheet, identify potential obstacles. How would you address those obstacles? Once we've identified our potential risks, resources, and obstacles, it's now time to set some priorities. As we've discussed, what are the issues that concern you the most? It's important that you begin the planning process and focus on items that you think are achievable. It helps to keep the group motivated if you can experience success with your plan. Using your action plan worksheet on page 11, review the risks and the needs identified in the first column. Keeping this information in mind, now identify your top three priorities. We're now ready to begin development of the action plan. An action plan is the foundation for your work. It serves as your roadmap. You wouldn't go on a trip without a map or directions, would you? Probably not. Thus, you need a plan to guide your actions. There are four steps in the action planning process. They are goals, objectives, action steps, and evaluation. We'll now review each step. As we review these steps, refer back to your priorities. Your priorities will most likely become your goals. Answer the questions under Action Plan on page 12 of your participant book. Goal setting is the foundation of effective projects. Some guidelines for establishing and setting your goals include encourage everyone to participate in the process, set goals that are realistic, agree on the goals within your group, and ask members for support of those goals. Goals are broad statements of intent, generally one to three years in duration. Goals are the target towards which you're working. Your goals will likely grow out of the priorities that you identified earlier. One example of a goal might be to strengthen community involvement. As you begin writing your goals, make sure that they're optimistic and positive, that they include demand for action, and that you use clear statements with easy to understand words. If your group does not have goals that provide direction, then a result will be a flurry of activities that have little strategic purpose. Please answer the question under goals on page 12 of your participant book. Using the action planning worksheet on page 13 of your participant book, list three identified goals. Objectives are specific, short-term outcomes necessary to ensure movement towards the goals. Unlike goals, objectives are written with the hope of accomplishment in six months to maybe a year. Here's an example of an objective. To increase the level of participation in neighborhood watch activities by 25%. The example shows how much more specific the objective is compared to the goal. The objective clearly states what the action will be, 
how much action, and in what time frame. In order to write objectives that are effective, they must be action-oriented, specific, time-limited, quantifiable, and realistic. Action-oriented should begin with an action verb, like to reduce or to enhance. Specific should state a particular result to be accomplished. Time-limited refers to defined time frames for completion. Quantifiable presents a measurable standard of achievement. And realistic designates a practical and attainable outcome. We've talked about several of these characteristics when we introduced the topic of objectives. Now let's take a few minutes to focus on quantifiable. Quantifiable means measurable. If the objective is not quantifiable, you may have difficulty being able to evaluate it and therefore to determine if it was successful. Answer the question under objectives on page 12 of your participant book. Using the action planning worksheet on page 13, select one of your goals and write one objective for it. You can complete the rest at a later date. Remember, make sure your objective is action-oriented, specific, time-limited, quantifiable, and realistic. Action steps are specific or tangible actions or steps which need to be accomplished in order to implement the objectives. As seen in the photo on this slide, these people must climb numerous steps before they can reach the top or their goal. Action steps are statements that answer the who, what, when, where, and how. These statements identify specifically who will be responsible, what you are going to do, when it will occur, where it will take place, and how it will be accomplished. If you can write action steps that address those questions, then you'll be well on your way to success. Now answer the question under Action Steps on page 12 of your participant book. Using the action planning worksheet on page 13, begin listing the steps that you need to be taken to support your identified goal and objective. When developing a plan for your neighborhood watch group, you should take the time to identify who will be responsible for each action step. Some actions will need to be implemented by every member of your group, while other actions can be implemented by individuals. The last topic we'll discuss is evaluation. Evaluation is critical to your plan. Evaluation determines if you are successful in meeting your goals, if your action plan is aligned with your vision, and it provides an opportunity for the group to determine if additional action needs to take place. Evaluation can be thought of as a time of reflection and redirection for your group. As we mentioned earlier in this training, strategic planning is cyclical in nature. After you've evaluated your data, and you made your program adjustments, replanning should then begin to address and identify new issues or events. Answer the question under the section titled Evaluation on page 14 of your participant book. You have now completed the Strategic Planning Self-Paced Curriculum.